Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Good to meet you. I make photo editing tutorials. And today we're talking about Luminar 4.2. There is a free update to Luminar 4. So if you own Luminar 4, current version was 4.1. Then if you own Luminar 4 slash 4.1, you get a free update to version 4.2. If you own a previous version of Luminar, which would be Luminar 2018, Luminar Flex, or Luminar 3, it is a paid upgrade to get to Luminar 4. This is a free update for current Luminar 4 customers, as I said, and there's some new stuff in it, and it's really cool. So in this video, we're gonna jump into the new features and demonstrate those and show you the kind of fun and the power that exists in this product. So let's get going. Okay, the first feature to talk about is called AI Augmented Sky. So you already know about sky replacements in Luminar. Now they've got another creative feature called AI Augmented Sky, which basically allows you to place objects into the sky to create sort of a composite type photo. So let's take a look. Here's an image, no edits to this. This is just straight out of camera, just a JPEG. Um, if you go over to the Creative tab, that'll be the second one down. You'll see AI Sky Replacement, which if you're a current user, I'm sure you're familiar with. Below that is AI Augmented Sky. So one click and you get a drop down menu. And here you go. So you've got a few options here. The first thing is object selection. This is what do I want to put in my sky? So if you drop that uh, object selection menu down and open it, you can see you've got a lot of different options. There's an Aurora Borealis option. You can stick a balloon, you can stick birds, clouds. Basically you can stick any of these things. You can also load a custom image. Now, if you want to load a custom image, you can't take just any photo. There's a couple of things that I've heard that you need to have uh, in this image. Number one is it should be a PNG with a transparent background, or number two, it should be an object over black. I'll come back and do videos about that in the future, but I just wanted to point that out. You can't just grab any photo and stick it in there. Also, I wanna note that these objects, they only load in the sky. So this is not something that you can take and then move it around to every part of the image. It's only gonna be recognized in the sky. So using this feature, it's a great way to either have, add creative elements to your photo or to do some surreal kind of stuff, which I'll show you as well. Let's start with this. I'm gonna click birds, and you can see that it'll stick that bird uh, image, if you will, into my sky. That's a little too busy, so I'm gonna go with birds three, which is a little bit calmer. Now it's way too big. So here's what you can do. If you click on place object, you will see that you get this little um, outline around your photo and then you can scale it and size it to fit. So you can do something like that. You can move it around, maybe scale it a little bit more. And you can even, if you get over here, you can rotate it if you want to, right? So maybe it looks a little bit better like that. And you just move it around, get it where you want it. Once you have it set, you just click place object again. And there it is. So here's the before, and there's the after. Very simple, very straightforward. And I think in this photo, it looks photorealistic. Now, you don't have to always do photorealistic. You can add other things as well. For example, there are fireworks. Now, fireworks are not gonna work in this photo, but you can add them. So once again, place object, maybe shrink this or move it however you'd like to position it in the photo, and come in there and then just say, place object one more time. Again, it doesn't fit in this photo. I'm just giving you an example, but the reason I did this is because I wanted to point out, you have these pink clouds, and you, you can come in here and say edit mask, brush, and then take the eraser, and if you don't like those pink clouds, you can just erase those pink clouds from there, say done, and you've got that set in your photo. Again, this is not photorealism. This is just having fun, but I wanted to point out that you can edit the uh, the mask, if you will, so that allows you to uh, customize that a little bit. Okay, the other thing I wanted to point out is that it'll actually work with AI sky replacement. So I have this shot from London. Let's say I come in here and I'm gonna take a sky selection. I'm gonna get Galaxy 2. We're making this up, my friends. This is just fun composite work. I put that night galaxy sky over this shot of St. Paul. St. Paul's? I think it's St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Not realistic, I get that. But let's say I've got that. Now I can come in with augmented sky and maybe I wanna choose an object selection. And let's say maybe I want to add a moon. I'm gonna get moon two and it drops the moon in. Now the moon's way too big and out of position. So place object, I'm gonna shrink that moon. And since we're just having fun here and making composites, I'm gonna move that moon over here. Once again, place object. 
and there's sort of a fantasy look. Now, I recommend doing those kind of things before you go back and do the rest of your edits. So after that, I might come over here to Light Tool, and maybe I'm gonna change the temperature, maybe I'm gonna bump up the Smart Contrast, maybe pull down Exposure a little bit, definitely pull down Highlights. Maybe I'll go over to Pro, and for the bottom, maybe I'm gonna drop the Exposure, and add some contrast. I'm kind of making it up here, as you can tell. I'm just kind of winging this. But um, my point is that I recommend fixing uh, or replacing the sky if you're gonna do that first, which I've said in many other videos. And then if you're gonna augment the sky, use the AI augmented sky to add your object and then come in and do whatever other edits you want. So you can see, you can very quickly go from a kind of, you know, eh, it's an okay photo to something that's surrealistic it's surreal right it's it's fun you're you're at the point of creating art now with the bird example that's photorealism so i think that's um you know you've basically got two options do you want to go with a realistic look or a surreal kind of look in this case it's very surreal but it's a lot of fun and i think that's part of the uh, the point with this is have fun be creative do something different and unique and enjoy what you're doing i'm going to show you another example along with a couple of uh, tips and tricks the first thing I wanna point out though is you do have to have sky in the photo. If you have a photo with no sky, it's not gonna recognize it. Just like with sky replacement where it will not recognize uh, or it won't allow you to stick a sky in if it doesn't see sky in the photo. So that's the same with augmented sky. Also, you'll notice that it does blend fairly perfectly. So in this case, I'm gonna take the Aurora. Now, this is a shot from Austin, Texas where I live. You're not gonna see the Aurora in Austin. Again, this is a surreal, this is a photo composite done for fun. Look here though, however, because there's water, I think it may have confused the algorithm a little bit and that's totally okay because you just click place object and it's, it's stuck it there. I just wanna move it up because I want that Aurora looking big and awesome over my home city of Austin, Texas. Place object and you're done. So I think uh, just keep that in mind. You may have to move the object around, but that looks good and you will notice that it blends incredibly well. There's no masking, it simplifies that composite process and I think does a great job. So there's before and after. Here's what you're probably gonna ask. Hey Jim, I wanna add an adjustment layer, adjustment layer, and I'm gonna go in here and get another uh, object to stick in my sky. So you're gonna come over here and say, I'm on adjustment layer, you notice that? Augmented sky, it doesn't recognize it. So there's a workaround, let me show you that. First, what I recommend doing is add that adjustment layer. Maybe you'll come in here and do a couple of things like maybe uh, change some contrast, maybe bump up some shadows, maybe give it a little AI accent, if I could grab that. Um, so I've come in, I've made a, uh, maybe I'll do a little color too. I do like my vibrance and my color. Um, so I've made a couple of adjustments on this layer. Here's how you get another object. You go up here and you say plus, create new stamped layer. So the stamp layer is basically, basically gonna squish my two layers together and give me a new stamped layer. Okay, here's my new stamped layer. Now I can come over here to the Augmented Sky tab, or I should say the Creative tab, get Augmented Sky, and now it recognizes it. So that's a way to stack multiple things. So I might come in here and maybe I wanna add some lightning. So it stuck the lightning in, but once again, it stuck it down low. So I wanna pull that up and I'm gonna do something like that. And now you're seeing it's not exactly working that great right there. So I'm gonna say place object, and that's where advanced settings come in. You might wanna come over here and either, you can defocus, now I don't wanna defocus the lightning, but you might wanna do some mask refinement. You can see how that's impacting things. I think that's looking pretty good as I drag this refinement further and further to the right. It is basically impacting the mask, which is effectively how this uh, lightning is blending with the objects below it. So I think that's done a good job. And once again, if you don't like things, you can come in here with the brush and you can say erase, and I'm gonna drop my um, cursor size, and maybe I'm gonna erase a little bit here. And you can see it's taking out some of that darker part where the blending wasn't so good. Now, I totally get that lightning is gonna be visible through the Aurora, so um, this is probably not the best example. I did wanna show you mostly how you can use it twice on the same photo by creating a stamped layer. And then you may need to come in and do some blending. But again, we're in the realm of fantasy here. That's what it actually looks like here in Austin. That's an unedited photo. And there it is with two objects placed using the AI augmented sky feature with a stamped layer. 
Okay, super fun feature, and I think we're done talking about it. Now we're gonna jump into the portrait enhancements. Okay, and here we are. Here's an old shot I took years ago, so that's a younger me, um, and I'm gonna make myself look even younger, but there are portrait enhancements. The first one, um, the AI Skin Enhancer has been enhanced, for lack of a better word. I think it does a great job, and notice that it's picking up my skin even though there's a camera in my face. So that's actually working really well, but now there's a shine removal. And so you can see there's a little bit of shine on my finger, my forehead, and my nose. So I'm gonna say shine removal, and you can see it's pulling those out of the photo. I think that's awesome. So there it is before and after. I think I've got a much better selfie, for lack of a better word, now. And the other thing is AI Portrait Enhancer has been uh, improved as well. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna say face light, and you can see it's really focusing just on the face. It's not getting my hair necessarily, or my fingers, uh, and it's not really getting the camera, except for a tiny bit on the edge there, but I think that's pretty incredible how it's automatically detecting the face. Um, eye whitening, you bet. I could use wider eyes, and there we go. That's looking better. Um, and again, there's only one eye showing, so it's working on more, uh, I'll, I'll call it difficult portraits. Um, eye enhancer, if I wanna sharpen that up, it's kinda like adding a little bit of clarity to the eyeball. Dark circles removal, yeah, I could use some of that. Again, there's only one eye in the photo. I think that's pretty cool. Slim face, it is 2.0. This has been enhanced, and you can see that that's working pretty well, and I think it looks very natural here. Uh, and then large eyes, there you go. It's enlarging my one eye that's in this photo. So uh, I can also improve eyebrow, and you can see that's getting a little bit darker. This is with one eye, it's basically half a face. So it's picking up uh, faces better. They've actually got a new face detection algorithm that's running underneath the software and it's, I think, working really well. Let me show you the before and the after. You can see all of these improvements here and with the sliding window, pretty significant. Okay, now I'm on a, a, a portrait of a couple I took at an event and I'm gonna show you how it's working on uh, multiple faces as well. So again, skin enhancer, I can drag that to the right. It does what you're used to it doing and does a great job. Shine removal, I think comes in fairly handy here. Let me show you the before. You can see it's a little bit shinier and a little bit less smooth and after, I think it's made a nice impact on this photo. Once again, AI portrait enhancer, face light, I think does a great job of detecting those two faces. I don't really wanna use it here because I don't think I need it, but I wanted to point out that it's picking up both faces. There's no red eye, but there is eye whitening, and you can see it's really popping her eyes there on the left. Obviously, his eyes are closed. There's before and after. Uh, dark circle removal, if you wanna use some of that. Slim Face 2.0 is gonna work on both of these faces. There you go. Let me show you that before and after. I think that's looking really good, my friends. Enlarge eyes, if I wanna do that, it's gonna pick up her eyes and do a little bit of enlargement there. And the last thing is improve eyebrows, if you wanna do that. The lip saturation, redness, all that stuff still works just fine. I could do that if I wanted to. Don't really feel like I need to in this portrait, but if you look at the before and the after, you can see that it quickly targets these, uh, these faces and does a great job, and by the way, that's what the photo actually looks like. I was zoomed in the whole time just to show you a close-up. So it's picking them up quite well, I think, and doing a wonderful job. Okay, in addition to that, this update includes a number of performance enhancements for both Windows and Mac users. So I highly recommend you go ahead and download this, which by the way, you can go to Luminar 4 and you can say check for updates and you should be able to get the free update uh, right there in the app if you're already on Luminar 4. If you're on a previous version and want to get Luminar 4, you can hit the link down below and use coupon code JIMNIX to save you $10. That does give me a uh, small commission, and I appreciate that. It's a free way for you to support all the video work that I do here on YouTube. And that is it, my friends. I wanted to give you a quick, high-level overview of all the enhancements in Luminar 4.2, primarily augmented sky and the portrait enhancement tools that have been, um, well, enhanced. So. That's it for today, my friends. I do appreciate you joining in. I'll be back with more videos showing off some of these features and doing some different things with them. So keep tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon and adios.